Now Afghan history is in the making at the presidential palace. After examining several gold objects, Victor Sarianidi has no doubt. This is the treasure he excavated in 1978. But is the gold all here? The only way to know is to open all six safes and catalog their contents. They have just seen a fraction of the collection. But already everyone in this room knows they are part of something extraordinary. The unveiling of one of the largest gold treasures of the ancient world. Once, this statue of Aphrodite lay upon a princess's chest. Aphrodite is a Greek goddess, and you can see that it's a very classically inspired item. But it has some differences. The wings on the figurine are not typical for classical period. And it has a little dimple on the head, just like the dots in South Asia of Indians. So you can see in this one piece, you have this interesting local style, which shows sort of a melting pot of artistic traditions, very much a metaphor of the Silk Road being a melting pot of peoples. On the princess's head lay a collapsible crown. Locally made, it could be broken down and fit into a saddlebag befitting the princess's nomadic way of life. The treasure is really important for Afghanistan because most of the pieces are clearly made here. And I think that this has some great use for the Afghan people as their cultural heritage. It's their past and it can be their future. Inside, today's cataloging is about to come to an end. But now at last, Victor Sarianidi can put to rest doubts he's carried for decades. His remarkable contribution to Afghan history was not lost. For me, it's a great day. For 25 years, I thought the treasure was lost. I think it's a great day, not only for me, but for all of mankind. Bamiyan's great day, when past terrors will be redeemed, is still in the making. The sleeping Buddha may lie here under a thin layer of earth, but to preserve the object that might be its foot, Dr. Tarzi orders the site filled in. The big fragment deserves to be studied. It's too bad that we can't continue to do so right now. But you shouldn't excavate impatiently, because things can be destroyed when you work in a hurry. But you have to have hope and dream about what might happen next year. Though the sleeping Buddha's discovery lies somewhere ahead, across Afghanistan there is already much to celebrate. Afghans are busy building a future from pieces of the shattered past.
the National Museum, restoration is guided by the very spirits of history. I think that the sculptor who created this with such beauty, he is here at this very moment. I always see him next to me. And why not? The lives that have passed today, their art, their knowledge, and the beauty of their country, their language, their race, all of these are evident in their art. A nation stays alive when its culture stays alive. Our people should know what happened. They should know about their culture, about their history. Not far away, Dr. Youssef Asefi is finding a new way to preserve Afghanistan painting. He is building an art gallery for the future. Hopefully, we can have a gallery to attract young artists to enjoy and work better. For me, it suffices to be a good guide and provide assistance to young people. At Kabul University, the next generation of sculptors creates art once deemed illegal. Now, there's a place for women as well as men. In Afghanistan, the past is painful and the present calm all too fragile. But now, for the first time in generations, rescued treasures are in full view. They encourage Afghans with the strength of their past and offer hope for tomorrow.